Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Keegan. I'm the general manager of oncology at Illumina, and I'm delighted to have our guest, uh, Dr. Gordon from Florida Cancer Specialist. He's the chief medical officer of the therapeutics and analytics division uh, within Florida Cancer Specialist, one of the larger community oncology practices in Florida. Uh, welcome, Dr. Gordon. Can you say maybe a few additional words about kind of your role and your, uh, you know, your business within FCS? Sure. Thank you for having me, Kevin. I, I've been with FCS for uh, 12 years, uh, been part of the administration executive board for a number of years, president, best president, now chief medical officer for therapeutics and analytics. Uh, I am much more focused now on uh, innovations, uh, genomics, um, uh, clinical trials, and therapeutics related to uh, selection of drugs. Fantastic. And, and we have had just a, a tremendous relationship with Florida Cancer Specialists for some time. Can you describe a little bit for us, like, how did you move the FCS organization into a more uh, genomic-driven precision medicine organization? Yes, that was something that uh, w was one of my dreams, uh, is to make sure that the, the patients are uh, appropriately tested uh, as much as possible. And I think internalizing genomics in, within FCS uh, was a great tool to accomplish that. Um, we uh, looked into uh, having uh, tremendous partners like Illumina. We, 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 we learned a lot during the process of setting uh, the NGS equipment um, validation process. We hired uh, a lot of molecular variant scientists. We uh, set up our bioinformatics uh, division. And with that, we are uh, proud to say that we have done more than a thousand NGS in-house and excited to, to uh, make this scalable in the future. I think uh, the ability of having genomics running house uh, will bring several uh, good uh, um, uh, elements for patient care. Number one, it will decrease turnaround time which is critical for the patient. You know, that anxiety of waiting on test results and genomic results is something that's very difficult to do for the patient, of course. Um, decreased turnaround time and will also allow us to get the right treatment uh, much faster than otherwise. And um, very excited with uh, what we can do with the, all the genomic results and the data that we are collecting about our patients and their journey of cancer care to get to the best therapies and clinical trials and other things. Uh, you know, that's, it's really amazing, especially given the, given the context that you guys are predominantly serving a community-based oncology practice and, and cancer community. Historically, and one of your colleagues in, in your earlier panel made the comment that genomics historically has been validated, I put in air quotes, as a research tool. You guys are putting in routine practice in the community. Can you talk about not only that, the impact of doing that and, and near patients, but also the other challenges that are uh, getting us in the way, get in the way for us of, of getting this to all patients. Right. Uh, so developing NGS in-house for me was mission critical to democratize access to, uh, to testing. I think uh, in community oncology, uh, there is still a lack of appropriate testing. I think we miss opportunities. And having um, the equipment, the personnel, uh, educational materials uh, developed by us in-house, that will develop a, a stronger buy-in by the providers. We have 258 physicians, another 300 plus advanced practice providers. Uh, and that will culminate into uh, increased uh, testing rates. And then with that, good things start happening, matching the right therapy to the right patient. And um, uh, we felt that having uh, uh, this in-house uh, uh, was critical to, to get us not only for uh, to match drugs that are uh, uh, available already, FDA approved, but also for our efforts in uh, clinical research. That, that's wonderful. The, the other thing I wanted to touch on, you mentioned in your panel, uh, I, I think you cited somewhere around the 70% as the, the number of patients that are being treated in community cancer clinics. You know, historically in large academic centers, uh, they've had access to uh, genomic testing, but now you've brought it to the patient in the community clinic. Um, what, was the, what, was, what was the thing that you uh, helped or, or that, that helped you to convince your oncologists in your network to do that internally with your team? 
It wasn't hard because we all know where genomics is going. It's going to absolutely change how we treat cancer patients, right? And, um, but obviously there were uh, barriers uh, to overcome the inertia of any disruptive idea. It, it took quite a bit. Um, also, uh, you know, capital investment, it's complicated technology, et cetera. But we, um, we got everybody on board and it wasn't that hard. And, um, and, and I, I think uh, the results will be uh, tremendous for, for patient care. We are, again, we see about 35 to 40% of all cancer patients in the state of Florida. And uh, if we're able to uh, get um, 90 plus percent of the patients that need to be typed or tested appropriately so, I think will change uh, how the outcome, I think will change progression-free survival, will improve quality of life, will eventually decrease cost of care by choosing the right therapy to the right patient. Yeah, such a powerful message. Um, in in, your, in uh, your clinic, you know, we um, really, really strong arguments for large panel or, or broad molecular profiling in areas like lung cancer. What about all the other cancer types that are either rare or, or less known or less uh, driven by guideline recommended biomarkers? How do, you, how do you handle with genomic profiling in uh, cancer types that aren't routinely or more, uh, more routinely adopted in areas like lung cancer? Yeah, so the message to our uh, physicians and other providers is obviously to always follow the guidelines, but uh, be liberal as far as ordering uh, comprehensive genomic profiling in all patients, uh, all types of cancers, uh, that there is a clinical indication to do so, uh, not only non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, so, so the physicians are getting much more um, uh, in, in tune with the with the process, and it's it's it's, uh, it's paying off, meaning uh, our uh, testing rate has gone up year over year, uh, and that makes me uh, very proud of the success so far. Fantastic. The the um, the other thing I wanted to bring up was in your panel there was a lot of discussion around, you know, all of the things that are that are uh, required beyond sequencing. You know, uh, access, um, reimbursement. Um, integration with your health record, um, you know, uh, uh, awareness within your communities, even out, uh, patient outreach. If you had to pick a couple like key barriers that are still sort of limiting within your practice to do more broad genomic profiling to drive the targeted therapy, what would, what would those couple of things be? Yeah, I, I think the most important one um, uh, is uh, payer coverage. We still struggle. Uh, uh, as far as having uh, proper payer coverage, even though we're following guidelines, and, and that's something that shouldn't be a matter of discussion, but we, we still have problems. And um, sometimes the payers request or require that we use a, a certain type of GCP or semi-GCP that's not what we prefer to use, and, and, and that can delay care can uh, decrease the level of uh, support for our physicians. Because another barrier is actually understanding the results of the molecular profiling, right? A few quick questions, just fill in the blanks here. Um, uh, you saw the technology roadmap from Illumina and where the sequencing technology is gonna take us in the future. Um, precision medicine in your community clinics will be, uh, looks like what in the future? Standard will be technology that will bring hope, optimism, cure, decreased costs, decreased suffering, and better treatment. Uh, cancer therapeutic guidance uh, for next, uh, the next thing for Florida cancer specialists. More and more broad testing will equal more opportunities for matching the right drug to the right patient, and specifically for clinical trial matching. What's next for FCS? Continue uh, partnership with uh, Illumina, continue uh, incre increasing um, scalability of our laboratory. We are in a very rigorous data governance uh, program because we want to really be able to match uh, the patient journey to genomics. And that will be very, very powerful for understanding of uh, cancer behavior. 
for clinical trial matching, for real-world evidence studies. Uh, I'm very bullish and excited with that. Fantastic. I got to tell you, Dr. Gordon, uh, your work at FCS with your team is, is truly innovative. Uh, what you're doing with uh, uh, community cancer uh, uh, patients is, is truly amazing. Uh, I applaud not only you and your team, but all the, the benefit that you're creating for patients. So thank you, Dr. Gordon. Appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you.